This video will be about how they trick us into special proceedings, otherwise known as statutory proceedings. This image is out of corpus juris secundum. Ordinary proceeding means the regular and usual mode of carrying on a suit by due course at common law. So an ordinary proceeding is at common law. The term special proceeding as used in statutes is a generic term for all civil remedies in courts of justice which are not ordinary actions. Special proceedings are of statutory origins and do not proceed according to the course of common law, but give new rights and afford new remedies, which really means that they take your common law rights and they'll tell you what you can get or what you can't get. I like to uh, break down some of these words with etymology. Sometimes it gives me a different understanding of what these words mean. I'm going to break down attorney with some etymology. To turn over, to transfer to another, money or goods, to assign to some particular use or service. That is what a turn means. Now let's look at the suffix ey. British dictionary definitions for EY. It's, very, it's a variant of Y. When you apply that to nouns, characterized by, consisting of, filled with, relating to. And so essentially, to turn over. That's what he's characterizing. That's what he's relating to. He's, he's turning your physical body over to the jurisdiction of the court. To transfer to another, money or goods. Well, attorneys are pretty good at doing that, transferring your money into their pockets. <laughs> to assign to some particular use or service. Well, you're relating that, and you're consisting of that, and he's characterized by that when you assign him the right to guard your rights, your personal rights. A client is what is called a ward of the court. These are the people, the people, who have their rights and safety protected and guarded by the courts. Okay, your rights are property. So if somebody is guarding your property and they won't even let you use it, what good is that property to you? Just an opinion. Look here at the Sixth Amendment. It says here at the bottom, and this is what they use to say you have to have a, have a lawyer, have an attorney. This is why they give you an attorney. But it says right here, down here at the bottom, to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. It doesn't say to have representation of counsel for his defense because they knew what a lawyer representing you meant. It meant that you were allowing that, that other person to guard your rights. Now, if you do not hire an attorney, the other way they try and trick you into their statutory jurisdiction is by getting you to represent the person. Uh, and I still don't... I talked about this in my first video and said you'd probably do it if you didn't know what else to do. We're about to get into that. But I still haven't found a way to represent my person. Because if I'm going to court, I am my person, or actually I am my people, because I'm one of the people. But representation of persons, a fiction of the law, the effect of which is to put the representative in the place, degree, or right of the person represented. So this is how they get you to step into that fictional 14th Amendment character. In propria persona, this is the way I would go to court. It is a rule in pleading that pleas to the jurisdiction of the court must be pled in propria persona, because if pleaded by an attorney, they admit the, jurisdic the jurisdiction as an attorney is an officer of the court, and he is presumed to plead after having obtained leave, which admits the jurisdiction. So... Right there, they're telling you, if you get an attorney, the attorney goes ahead and gives the jurisdiction to the court. Now, once you are pleading in propria persona, which is your proper person, you need to make sure the court is in a court of records. And here's a de 
definition of the court of records that gives you some case law for your points and authorities because you're going to need to write that out for the judge. Don't worry about the prosecutor. <laughs> He's not going to understand this stuff anyways. <laughs> A court of record is a judicial tribunal having attributes and exercising functions independently of the person of the magistrate designated generally to hold it. That just throws out the judge from being able to make any decisions for you. And that proceeding according to the and proceeding according to the course of common law, it acts and proceeds being enrolled for a perpetual memorial. Here's the definition for magistrate. Person clothed with power as a public civil officer. And they're clothed with power, and they're clothed with the power to make sure that the free society we live in, or civitas, is operating smoothly. They do not have the power to step on your rights unless you are under a statutory system and they had had the legislature write their written will to, to stomp on your rights, and they've been doing that a lot lately. Here's the definition of a judge. An officer so named in his commission who presides in some court, a public officer appointed to preside and to administer the law in a court of justice. The chief member of a court in charge with the control of proceedings and the decisions of questions of law or discretion. Now, when you are in a statutory system, they can use this power, this judicial discretion, to really stomp on your rights and trample on your rights. But when you are in a common law system, remember that common law is based off of natural law, which is based on the individual's rights. Hopefully by now, everybody is starting to get the idea that people have all of their rights reserved for them. The persons have rights and duties that they have to perform for the society or the civitas that they live in. And the citizens only have privileges which can be taken away. And they have the right to due process of law under the statutory system. Now when you're one of the people and you reserve all of your rights, you can use something called natural law. And here's the definition for natural law was intended to donate a system of rules and principles for the guidance of human conduct which, independently of an acted law or of a system particular to any one people, might be discovered by the rational intelligence of man, not men, man, a and would be found to grow out of and conform to his nature meaning by that word his whole mental, moral, and physical constitution. Okay, so essentially let me break down what they're saying here. And one of the key things I see, to a system particular or peculiar to any one people, not a nation of people, not a society of people, not a culture of people, but one people. So you can be one and people at the same time. And obviously, uh, down here, his whole mental, moral, and physical constitution, that is your mind, your body, and your soul. So think about that. Also, when you're taking actions against the government, Look here, this is out of actions in corpus juris secundum. For example, there is no judicial remedy to enforce the rights of an individual as against a state without the state's consent. They have to consent for you to have a right. Just think about that. Anyways, the next video will be a very basic understanding of how to use some of these ideas in court. I hope you stay with me. Thanks for watching.